Welcome to Laker. Consider yourself at home. Laker Airways, a British charter airline, was established by Sir Freddie Laker in 1966, based at Gatwick Airport. First, a few words from commerce and culture. It seems that quite a number of our viewers are not yet subscribed to our channel. We really appreciate your support, so don't forget to subscribe now and tap the notification bell so you won't miss out when we upload new videos. Your support goes a long way so we can continue to produce great videos like this. Make sure you're watched to the end, the summary will surprise you. Now, back to Laker Airways. Are you ready for Freddy? The airline began operations on July 29, 1966, using two Bristol Britannia turboprops. The airline expanded its fleet with five BAC-111-300 short-haul jet aircraft in December 1967. Laker Airways also acquired a former British Eagle aircraft from Bahamas Airways in 1971 for short and medium-haul charter operations. To ensure the fleet remained active throughout the year, Laker Airways offered incentives such as 30% discounts to tour operators during the winter when demand was low. In 1977, Laker Airways started low fare scheduled services between London Gatwick Airport and New York City's John F. Kennedy Airport, becoming the second long-haul, low-cost, no-frills airline after Iceland's Loftlier. Laker Airways implemented weight-saving measures to increase the range of their aircraft, including a reduced baggage allowance limit and carrying fewer passengers than the aircraft's capacity allowing the airline to carry additional fuel and increase the flight range. The weight-saving measures were used when the airline introduced the McDonnell Douglas DC-10s, which enabled non-stop flights from the UK to any point east of the Rockies. I'm Freddie Laker. I own Laker Airways, and I'm dedicated to low-cost air travel. In 1976, over a million passengers flew Laker, so if you're planning a visit across the Atlantic, believe me, we know what we're talking about. With Laker, you can fly round-trip to the USA or Canada in one of our wide-body DC-10s. During the early 1970s, Laker Airways encountered challenges from aviation authorities in the UK and US as they sought approval for a low-cost, no-frills transatlantic service between London and New York marketed as SkyTrain. Laker Airways acquired two Boeing 707s from British Eagle to start SkyTrain service with a break-even load factor of 62.9%. The plan was to offer daily flights during peak summer and four times a week during the remainder of the year. Unfortunately, the airline did not survive the recession of the early 1980s and went bankrupt on February 5, 1982, after operating its final flight. However, Laker Airways' low-cost model and weight-saving measures proved to be innovative and profitable, making a lasting impact on the aviation industry. Sir Freddie Laker unveiled his plans for SkyTrain flights during a press conference at London's Savoy Hotel on June 30, 1971. Despite skepticism from some quarters, Laker was convinced that there was a huge market for this type of service, and that it would not just divert existing passengers from other airlines, but actually increase the total number of people flying between Britain and the United States each year from 14 million to 16 million. However, SkyTrain faced numerous delays in obtaining approval, forcing Laker Airways to find other ways to keep its long-haul planes busy. Initially, the airline used Boeing 707s on Mediterranean and Canary Islands routes, replacing Bristol Britannia's on its long-haul flights, many of which were affinity group charters to North America, primarily the US. To keep its planes busy, Laker Airways operated a once-a-week low-fare service linking Luxembourg with Barbados on behalf of International Caribbean Airways, from December 1970. In November 1972, the airline made aviation history by becoming the first non-North American carrier to operate the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 widebody aircraft, receiving two new planes from the McDonnell Douglas Corporation's factory in Long Beach, California, through Japanese lessor Mitsui. Laker Airways' innovation and commitment to low fare, long-haul travel ultimately led to the creation of the SkyTrain service, which finally obtained approval in 1977, 
paving the way for affordable transatlantic air travel for millions of people. On April 1, 1973, new regulations called Advanced Booking Charters ABC, were introduced in the United Kingdom, United States, and Canada, replacing the previous Affinity Group rules. The following day, Laker Airways launched the world's first ABC flight from Manchester to Toronto, with passengers paying £45 for a round trip. The new ABC regulations allowed Laker Airways to expand its business and become the leading provider of transatlantic ABC flights. On September 26, 1977, Laker Airways launched the SkyTrain service between London Gatwick and New York JFK. The service was a huge success and generated over £2 million in profit in its first year. The airline also expanded to Los Angeles in 1978 with two second-hand Boeing 707 aircraft. Thanks to Freddie Laker, that you can cross the Atlantic for so much less than it would have cost you in the early 1970s. Competition worked! In 1979, the airline purchased seven more DC-10 planes. Following a request from Intison owner Harry Goodman, Laker Airways started offering Disney World charters to the UK market from Florida, and the program grew quickly and was eventually converted to a SkyTrain operation to Miami. Laker Airways' success prompted the company to apply for a license to launch a low-cost service from Gatwick and or Luxembourg to Sydney and Melbourne. However, the Australian Transport Minister rejected the application citing the UK-Australia Scheduled Air Services market's reservation for British Airways and Qantas. In 1980, Laker Airways proposed a scheduled low-fare service from London Gatwick, which would replace the ABC flights to Australia. The airline planned to operate one flight a day in each direction using its five DC-10 widebodies, which would fe feature a first-class section called Pullman. However, the Civil Aviation Authority did not approve Laker's application for a UK-Australia scheduled low-fare service, nor did it approve a similar application by BCAL to launch a conventional scheduled service between Gatwick and four Australian destinations via Colombo. In 1981, Laker Airways added Tampa, Florida, to its destinations from Gatwick, Manchester, and Prestwick. By this time, the airline had a fleet of 20 planes comprising 14 widebodies and 6 narrowbodies. The number of employees for Laker Airways and associated companies doubled over this period to 2000. Laker Airways offered up to three daily flights each way between Gatwick and JFK, Gatwick and Miami, and twice daily round trips between Gatwick and Los Angeles during the summer period. As a result, the airline became the fourth-largest transatlantic scheduled airline between the UK and US and the fifth-largest overall. By this time, Laker Airways had already transported more than 2 million SkyTrain passengers. Passengers favored Laker Airways transatlantic charters due to the amenities offered such as meals, movies, and an open bar, which were innovative at the time. In 1979, the UK government sought to address the scarcity of seats on British Airways' monopoly service from Heathrow to Hong Kong, by introducing competition on the route. BCAL, Laker, and Cathay Pacific all applied for the route, creating a race between the airlines. Laker proposed a daily sky train service from Gatwick to Hong Kong via Sharjah, using single-class, 380-seat DC-10s, with plans to switch to larger Boeing 747s as demand increased. Meanwhile, BCAL proposed a conventional service from Gatwick via Dubai, using their DC-10 widebodies in a three-class configuration with first, executive, and economy classes. BCAL also agreed to match Laker's low fares. The CAA granted BCAL an unlimited license to operate, operate scheduled services between London and Hong Kong. However, the Hong Kong ATLA refused to endorse BCAL's application, causing tension between the UK and Hong Kong governments. Cathay Pacific, who had been excluded from the route, began lobbying in the UK and Hong Kong. Cathay Pacific and Laker appealed to the Secretary of State for Trade and Industry, John Knott, against the CAA, who overturned the decision, allowing all three airlines to operate on the route without restrictions on service frequencies. 
Laker Airways also planned to create the first daily round the world through service by a British airline in both directions, connecting its Gatwick, Los Angeles SkyTrain with the proposed Gatwick, Hong Kong SkyTrain over the Pacific via Honolulu and Tokyo, marketed under the trademark Globe Train. However, established Trans-Pacific Airlines, including Cathay Pacific, opposed Lakers' plans, fearing that the excess capacity would threaten their profitability and long-term viability. In the end, Laker was unable to obtain regulatory approvals for Globe Train and had to abandon the project. Laker Airways was unable to withstand the economic challenges of the early 1980s recession and competition from well-established scheduled airlines. Lakers issued share capital was a mere £10,000 in 1978, although its paid-up share capital was £504,000 in 1980, this was far less than BCAL and British Airways, whose issued share capital stood at £12 million and £100 million respectively. Laker Airways undercapitalization, unsustainable high debts, and weak finances were compounded by the lack of significant assets to back them. The early 1980s recession hit both the UK and US, characterized by negative and low growth, high unemployment, high inflation, and high interest rates. During this time, Laker Airways was expanding to sustain its commercial success and that of SkyTrain in particular. As a result, the company borrowed at high interest rates, increasing its borrowing costs and debts. Although Laker Airways' fleet was modern wide-bodied aircraft, thus making it cheaper to operate and maintain, the sudden tripling of crude oil prices after the Shah of Iran's fall from power hit the airline hard. Laker Airways was unable to hedge its future supplies by negotiating fixed-rate, forward purchases because such financial derivatives were non-existent. The SkyTrain model proved to be flawed as it relied on high year-round traffic to maintain profitability at reduced fares, despite Laker Airways having lower expenses and a simpler organizational structure. The airline's troubles began when its competitor, Pan AM, decided to discontinue its lowest economy fares in areas where it competed with SkyTrain, dropping prices by up to 66%. Laker Airways responded by introducing discounted premium cabins called Regency Class. However, after the winter peak of 1981-82, there was insufficient traffic to support four airlines competing across the North Atlantic between January and March. As a result, British Airways and TWA, Laker's other transatlantic rivals, decreased their prices by a comparable amount, resulting in a 50% reduction in Lakers' loads and cash inflow between October 1981 and February 1982. Some have speculated that Laker also faced a decline in passengers due to the series of high-profile fatal accidents that occurred on the DC-10 aircraft at the end of the 1970s. The final nail in the coffin for Laker Airways came when British Caledonian, BCAL, and other European operators of the DC-10 warned McDonnell Douglas and GE that if they entered into a rescue contract with Laker, they would terminate all business with the companies. McDonnell Douglas and GE did not pursue the rescue contract, resulting in Laker Airways collapse in the early hours of February 5, 1982 with debts of £270 million, marking the largest corporate failure in Britain. Freddie Laker, the founder of Laker Airways, filed a lawsuit against IATA member airlines including British Airways, BCAL, Pan AM, TWA, Lufthansa, Air France, Swissair, KLM, SAS, Sabina, Alitalia, and UTA, accusing them of conspiracy to drive his airline out of business by engaging in predatory pricing. They settled out of court for $50 million, and British Airways reached a separate out-of-court agreement with Freddie Laker for £8 million. In July 1985, British Airways agreed to pay an additional $35 million on top of its previous out-of-court settlement with Freddie Laker. The combined sum allowed Laker to pay off its outstanding debts of $69 million, permitted British Airways to proceed with its privatization and prevented potential bankruptcy for other airlines. In summary, Laker's collapse can be attributed to the following factors. 1. Expanding too fast. 2. Using borrowed US funds to purchase new aircraft. 3. 
subsequent devaluation of the British pound which resulted in higher interest payments. 4. Travelers' reluctance to fly on the DC-10s after fatal crashes in Paris and Chicago. 5. Its competitors making sure that Laker failed. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe.